বরঠাকুর আই এস একাডেমি প্রস্তুতি আর অধ্যয়নের নির্ভরযোগ্য ঠিকনা Hello everyone, welcome to the Hindu Analysis for 26 May 2021. Let us begin with the first article today. New IT rules come into force today. Will comply says Facebook. So, the government of India brought in new IT regulations called the Information Technology Guidelines for Intermediaries and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules for 2021. This was brought in few months back. Till now, no intermediary or social media intermediary such as facebook whatsapp google twitter telegram except co have complied with this new rules brought in by the government of india so from today they come into force they had this much of time this much of period in their hands to comply with the new rules brought in by the government of india but the above mentioned social media intermediaries or social media platforms did not comply with these new rules so since they become operationalized today what will be the consequences of these companies for not adhering to these new rules and regulations brought in by the government of india as for now there has been no clarity as to what are the consequences of for non compliance of this code brought in by the government but experts domain experts particularly say that the companies which are operating in indian territory could lose the safe harbor protection that currently gives them protection from liability so let me give you an example so a person posted something critical or his own opinion or his uh, personal feeling on a social media platform in a post now if the platform on which he posted his opinion decides that whatever he has posted or whatever he has said in that statement is against their own company policies they can either deplatform him or either they can delete his account that is deplatforming either they can delete his uh, post or suspend his account for a certain period of time so at the end of the day the control is in the hands of the company which operates under its own rules and regulations stating that they have this protection from the government of india against liability so the person who got deplatformed wishes to sue the company or file a complaint against the company stating that the company had taken away his right of expression or right of freedom of speech he cannot do so because these companies act as intermediaries and are not liable under indian law so this is a sort of protection that these companies enjoy in other countries except european countries because they have gdpr rules which bring them under the ambit of european law which acts at the behest of the citizens of the european nations and not at the behest of the company so twitter has been accused by uh, various uh, experts in united states in russia in other countries particularly in india also for not playing by the rules of the nation that they are operating in particularly the well known example in terms of social media overreaching its authority and trying to take away the rights of an individual citizen was in the case of ex president uh, the earlier president 45th president of uh, united states president trump where they deplatformed him and suspended him indefinitely for his tweets on the mere charge that he in, uh, he instigated riots on the capital city though no tweet of his so i'm not saying it's a moral thing or anything i'm talking in a legal term on a pure legal sense when you look at the t- uh, tweets for which he was suspended indefinitely from twitter and facebook and other social media platforms no tweet of his or no social media statement of his directly asked for violence so i am not saying that he did something good he did something wrong we are not discussing that here what we are discussing is did he actually call for violence during the capital hill riots the answer is no 
Was there a suggestion of such a thing from his tweets? Yes. But when you ask a legal expert, he says that or his opinion would be close to what I am trying to say here. It's up to the individual to interpret whatever the President of United States had posted on those in those tweets. So interpretation, it boils down to interpretation. Interpretation will differ, differ from one person to the other person. But when you look back at the tweets for which Trump was suspended from social media platforms, no tweet of his did call for actual violence and rioting. On the other hand of the spectrum, you have the Iran Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini who calls for constant killing of Jewish people in the Jewish state, which Twitter has no problem with. So this is what the experts are saying. Why apply different laws and different standards for different people based on your own biases? There should be an equality of law and equality of application of rules. When somebody is asking for uh, violence, he should also be punished in the same manner like you applied the rules for ex-president. So they feel that the uh, Twitter and these social media companies which act as intermediaries are using their position to influence politics. So this is an accus accusation that has been made and there has been ample evidence that was found to prove the point that these companies do act in bad faith in certain countries and they have been undermining laws of that respective countries and from where they are operating from just with the fact that they have been tagged as intermediaries and they are above the law through the way of li uh, liability, protection with liability laws. So few days back, things did take a little bit of turn when Florida Governor DeSanto signed a controversial law, controversial according to the social media companies, but not controversial according to experts who bat for the concept of freedom of in, you know, expression or freedom of uh, thought, they say he brought in a new law which took away the protection of liability from these social media platforms. So what this law that DeSanto brought in was that if a person's tweet or social media post is deleted by either Facebook or Google or Twitter, the person can now file a legal suit against those companies for taking away his right of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. This changes everything. These companies are operating with impunity by the fact that nobody can sue them or nobody can take action against them. Now with that protection gone, these companies are li liable and vulnerable to su uh, suits, that is court cases. So when you compare Indian court cases with American court cases and European court cases. American court cases are much harder to get out of than our court cases. Because if you don't know the culture in America, for each and everything, they can file a suit. If two people are walking on the street and one person says to the other person something negative or something bad, the recipient can claim, uh, claim himself to be a victim of verbal abuse and can sue the other person for saying those things and get some sort of compensation monetary or otherwise from that person. So that is how uh, they use law to get what they want. So it's not a wrong thing. They actually use their rights in a very effective and then very um, fashionable way. That is what I found about these culture in particularly in the European and Western countries where they use law to their own advantage. Uh, for whatever reason, we uh, in our country kind of fail to do uh, do that. So because there is lack of uh, clear lack of understanding and awareness into what our laws can do. But that is beside the point. Coming back to India from all those uh, places. Now the laws clearly state that the, these companies should conform to whatever these ordinance was brought in by the government of India. WhatsApp has filed a case in Delhi High Court stating that these laws which were brought in by the government are against the privacy of individual citizens and they are challenging these new laws. As I said earlier, Facebook is in the process of, they are saying the right words, but I don't think they'll, they are going to comply with the laws because again, 
facebook owns whatsapp so if whatsapp is doing that there is a certain interest in facebook in not complying with the laws as discussed earlier co has been the only micro blogging platform that has met with the compliance requirements of the new rules and as far as twitter and whatsapp twitter did not comment but whatsapp has went ahead and filed a case in the high court of delhi again as the new laws coming to the next article bay of bengal fermenting yas hotter than normal for season now scientists are claiming uh, claiming climate scientists especially are claiming that bay of bengal where cyclone yas has formed and is moving towards landfall is at least to 2 degrees warmer than what is normal for this time of the year so they have this uh, data that they collect every year uh, without uh, missing it and when they compare it to whatever the temperatures that have been recorded this year compared to earlier years what was recorded during the earlier year it has become evidently clear that the temperature has gone up by 2 degrees which is doesn't bode well for in terms of global warming but the north bay of bengal is exceptionally warm with temperatures up to 32 degrees celsius which is little bit of an abnormal temperatures so to go back into time amphan was a super cyclone that ravaged the west bengal in last year the devastation that uh, that was left behind this particular cyclone which was uh, termed as a super cyclone was the strongest storm to hit india's eastern coast since the super cyclone of 1999 which struck uh, pradeep and odisha now researchers uh, when they had uh, studied their da- data explicitly they have pointed out two trends that suggest a relatively decrease uh, relative decrease in number of cyclones in the bay of bengal and a rise in the arabian sea and about 60% of the cyclones that form in these seas make landfall in india which leaves a wide spread wide spread destruction of property and loss of life though minimal but at the end of the day people do die during these cyclones for various reasons coming back to the yas itself the indian meteorological department first warned on may 19th of the likelihood of the formation of yas even though the tokte was still completely abating after landfall over gujarat now as far as yas is concerned the name was furnished by oman's meteorological agency and is expected to touch wind speeds up to 125 kilometers and which is the compared to tokte it is lower but nonetheless these speeds are dangerous moving on to the next article slowing pace of india's mucomycosis threat now in this editorial this is the perspective of an oncology doctor who deals with cancer and extensive use of steroids to uh, in patients particularly because oncology involves treating aggressive cancers with use of steroids and these people oncologists are best adapted and uh, aware of the adverse impact and effects of various viral infections that arise out of such treatments particularly use of steroid treatment excessively to treat, to treat a disease or to use it as a life saving drug by this time we should also note that the central government has already passed an order suggesting states to declare this uh, black fungus infection or the mucomycosis uh, dc uh, anti fungal infection as an epidemic as a way of monitoring and tracking the number of cases that were being reported in the state of karnataka we have seen the beds that were allotted to this disease were completely filled within a span of hours indicating that this is not something that is going away very soon because the high and extensive use of steroids in treating of covid patients according to a study that was published by fungal infection and uh, current fungal infection report 14 cases per 100000 cases so this is almost 70 times higher than what is it, what it is being reported in other countries moving on now it must be made abundantly clear that mucomycosis not is not transmissible from one individual to the other the way covid is so this is a pretty much not a transmissible disease that has been very well established and it is time for us to create awareness regarding the same also now 
we understand one of the reasons that we are seeing high numbers of these particular fungal infections in COVID-19 patients is extensive use of steroids. So that is not a particular outlier for this disease. There has to be some pre-existing conditions that accelerate or that increases the chance of seeing these fungal infections in COVID-19 patients. What is the most common cause for this is? The most common cause for E is uncontrollable diabetes. And some other causes include the treatment of some cancers, particularly steroids, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, such and such. But the primary cause is uncontrollable diabetes mellitus. Yesterday, we studied a report. We saw a report in Hindu stating that the number of cases, almost 90 to 95 percent of the black fungus infection cases that we are seeing in patients are arising out of patients who are suffering from diabetes. So it is a clear cut case of these diabetes patients are vulnerable, are highly vulnerable to this anti um, black fungus or mucomycosis infection. But the reality of the matter is treatment of COVID-19 is only worsening the situation because steroids form a very important aspect of the treatment regime for COVID-19. And different studies have clearly indicated that steroids have actively helped in lowering death rates by reducing the cytokine storm phase which can develop in some patients. Now, when steroids are used extensive, extensively or prematurely and without any proper medical supervision, it can be harmful. I have personally seen ca in cases where people who are not aware of the dangers of steroids just saw some WhatsApp forward or some YouTube channel and somebody's X and Y's decision or uh, suggestion went out and bought highly powerful and highly dosed steroids that can, ta that can be taken orally and has self-medicated and had seen adverse impacts of this self-medication. So I have been personally experienced with how these steroids are harmful on an individual when these are taken under, uh, not under the medical supervision, but on their own predication. Now, besides causing reduced immunity levels, steroid can also be increase blood sugar levels, which can cause additional harm if left unchecked. Please don't use steroids without any proper medical supervision. Now, how to treat this mucomycosis epidemic? So, mucomycosis is associated with very high morbidity and mortality and treatments require a multidisciplinary team approach and which at this point of time is very impossible to mount. Ac uh, limited medical access and are challenged in terms of having experts. So, as a way of treatment, surgery is out of question but it, because it requires a lot of uh, resections. And whatever the antifungal drugs that are available are very highly priced and are out of reach of many. And also remember that all these medications have to be administered under medical supervision and for longer periods of time, making treatment to this particular fungal disease very difficult to sustain on large scale. And whatever the side effects that these drugs bring out in patients are highly, are to be monitored in a highly sensitive manner but due to the difficulty in current disposition, we cannot do it so successfully, leading to much worse results than what we are experiencing now. Now, what can be done to reduce the number of cases and the intensity of this particular fungal infection? Steroid use at home for COVID-19 should be done only under the supervision of healthcare workers. Patients on steroids for COVID-19 should report the symptoms for this disease at the earliest possible, if and any visible in the earlier stages. Now, COVID-19 treatment experts and policy makers must consider widespread training of healthcare workers, including ASHA workers and nursing professionals to raise an awareness on this particular infection. Moving on to the next article, ICMR unlikely to commission new COVID-19 zero survey. So, zero surveys are one of the critical tools in the arsenal of medical community to find out how the infection is progressing in a society. So, the ICMR has came out and said that they are unlikely to immediately undertake a fourth national serology survey to estimate the extent of exposure to the coronavirus since January. Till now, 
ICMR has conducted three national zero surveys since May of 2020 and the results that they found through the surveys was that the exposure to virus was much higher than what was reported by confirmed cases. So they found some discrepancies. Now the third survey that was uh, conducted measured the spread of infection between August and December and found that 21% of Indian adult population and 25% of those in the age groups between 10 and 17 may have already been infected by coronavirus. So what is zero survey? In a zero survey, they take blood samples from participants and measure antibodies to check to the exposure to the virus that is ravaging the country. Now, the ICMR is of the opinion that because of vaccinations, as vaccinations do trigger antibody response after two weeks after receiving them, these results could be tainted. So they find little meaning in conducting a zero survey as India has already begun vaccination process. But another official also pointed to this fact that hospitals and healthcare infrastructure in almost all parts of the country are entirely engaged in dealing with the surge in the second wave. And now the idea of conducting a zero survey would be challenging because most of the resources are already overworked and already engaged in fighting the pandemic. Other than the overarching numbers, the zero surveys have also revealed the patterns of infections in urban, rural, slum and non-slum regions and it also gives an indication of whether a significant fraction within a region had reached threshold immunity levels to keep future outbreaks in check. So zero surveys are a tool in the hands of the medical community as I said to find out whether the community has reached immunity or herd immunity levels to monitor and check for future, future outbreaks of the same disease or any other viruses. Moving on, panel to define offenses of speech and expression. Now a committee has been constituted by Home Ministry on reforms to the IPC may propose a separate section to the same. The panel which was constituted wants to reform the Briti uh, British era IPC code and is likely to propose a section on offenses relating to speech and expression. Till now there has been no clear definition of what constitutes hate speech under the Indian Penal Code. Now the committee is trying to change the, this lack of definition. Now they have decided that they want to define what such speech is for the first time. Who will decide what constitutes a hate speech? So legally speaking, criminal sections can be invoked on any such speech as to which has led to violence or disturbances of law and order. That has been our interpretation till now. Now, as the hate speech, the term itself is a loaded term, criticizing someone is not hate speech but sometimes as I said law boils down to interpretation and this can lead to a lot of confusion and criminal liability. Now as far as the Bureau's definition the Bureau of Policy, Police Research and Development recently published a manual for investigation, investigation agencies that are interested with cyber harassment cases and they try to define the same. According to their definition, the term hate speech can be defined as language that dis, uh, degenerates, insults, threatens or targets an individual based on their identity and other traits such as sexual orientation or disability or religion, etc. So this, uh, this was again, this is not something new that has been tried to addressed. In earlier 2018, the Home Ministry had written to the Law Commission to prepare a distinct law for online hate speech but that didn't materialize. So a committee was formed to uh, formulate stricter laws and the committee was formed in the wake of section 66A of the Information Technology Act of 2000. The section, 2000, uh, section 68A of IT Act of 2000 provided way for punishment or handing down punishment for sending offensive messages through communication services which was scrapped by the Supreme Court in 2015. Again in 2019, the ministry has decided to reframe the or overhaul the Indian Penal Code, which was framed in 1860 and has still 
lingering effects of our colonial past now as far as the committee that is being constituted now they are open for suggestions and the committee has received suggestions from various experts and domain experts now the committee for reforms in criminal laws will be examined by uh, the suggestions received by this committee will be examined by ministry before changes are to be adopted so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to define what speech offenses can be tried or reformed or added and under to the ambit of ipc and reform or postulate new laws to address this onslaught of hate speech and uh, uh, harassment that people are experiencing on social media platforms and on the internet on a daily basis moving to the next article us calls for transparent new probe uh, into covid-19 origins so yesterday we were discussing about a leaked dossier from the federal bureau of investigation where they identified that few scientists who are working in the wuhan institute of virology had got hospitalized and admitted to a hospital for unknown illnesses in the november of 2019 itself much before what we uh, much before the covid-19 uh, was announced by was made public by the chinese government to the world now the united states on its part has called for in a new international uh, team of experts to be allowed to evaluate the source of sars cov 2 and the early days of outbreak now they are saying that though the world health organization conducted a report which majority of the countries rejected they are saying that despite that we want a second phase of investigation into the origins of the corona virus and on their part the us intelligence agencies are examining reports as i said earlier where wuhan institute of virology scientists who were working there and doing gain of function research got seriously ill in 2019 a month before the first covid-19 case was reported as far as china it dismissed this totally untrue reports from their statement not mine they have said that they are reporting they are rejecting every uh, accusation that was being made against their country and the research institute that is based in wuhan and they said that they have uh, it had not been exposed to covid-19 before december of 2019 and has zero function record in keeping uh, kept among its staff and graduate students so far so likewise china is lying out of its teeth and us on its part is trying to take leadership again in this since they were the first country to denounce the lab leak theory if you remember dr fauci was one of the vocal experts who was saying that whatever these people are suggesting few scientists suggesting that this virus got out of a lab he was the first and foremost vocal reject um, opponent of this lab leak theory after facing a lot of backlash over the year he recently changed his tune also now he is saying that he does he no longer believes that these lab transmitted from or jumped from animals to humans and there is a possibility that this virus was tinkered in a lab so day and day the lab leak theory seems to be holding more water than these people purpose to be so thank you stay safe namaste bothakur is academy prastuti aru adhyanor nirbhor jogyo thikona bothakur is academy